Hey everyone, Magic Sora here, and this is going to be, for the sake of my sanity and for the sake of keeping this video a reasonable time, unscripted, pretty much unedited, everything. So let's hurry up and get into it. This is going to be everything that I missed and everything that came out after the live stream. So starting us off, Jandis Barra, 5 mana 2 1, Mage, Rogue card, Battle Cry, summon two random 5 cost minions, secretly pick one that dies when it takes damage. This is a super cool effect. I don't think it's very strong. Uh, summoning two random 5 drops, you know, if you discover them maybe, there are some really bad 5 drops, including Jandis Barov. The body there is awful. Um, I don't know, think about it as like functionally, uh, one of them has 1 HP, right? If you summon two 5 drops, one of them has 1 HP. That's okay. I don't know if this is strong enough to see play. Besides, you're kind of getting into the point of the game where you need to summon things that have purpose and that affect the board state somehow. And you're probably not going to do that with two random 5 drops. <laughs> Just going to put that one out there. So, I don't know. If you would expect like a 5-1 like a and a 5-5... Eh. I mean, the, the secretly is big. You can't undervalue that either, but I don't know. I also just don't think it'll fit into either archetype, right? I, I can't think of, like, a really good place. I guess it would be, like, a tempo card, right? But uh, I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Wandmaker. Add a one-cost spell from your class to your hand. It's a battle cry. It's a two-mana, two-two. It's a neutral. Uh, That's cool. <laughs> I mean... I think um, maybe Demon Hunter wants this. Everyone else, kind of not so much. I don't know, Shaman has some okay one-cost cards, but it's just one, right? With Spellkin, you got two, so there was a... If you whiffed once, you had the chance to redeem yourself. Or if you... Uh, you also have that chance to double up on good cards. And the chance to double up on bad cards is, like, whatever, right? I think Demon Hunter wants this the most, though. So probably include that in some Demon Hunters. Sneaky Delinquent, 2 mana, 3 1, Stealth, Death Rattle, add a 3 1 Ghost with Stealth to your hand. None of these next few are going to all be neutral, by the way. I just led with the one I missed. So, um, okay. I mean, <laughs> add it to your hand? I don't know. We had a 4 mana, 5 1 that summoned a 5 1. And unless Ghost becomes like a, a tribe in the way that. Like, if we have an undead tribe, maybe this will see play. Um, I don't know though. I think, uh, this is a little slow. Like how often are you playing a value oriented deck where you're like, oh, but I need a, an aggressive th uh, two drop though. The fact that it has stealth is nice, but uh, I don't know. I'm not too sure about this one. All right. Five, seven taunt, six mana, smug senior taunt, death rattle, add a five, seven ghost with taunt to your hand. Same deal. Um, wait, did the other one have... Stealth? Okay, the, the other ghost has stealth as well. I assume it's also a 2 mana and that this is a 6 mana body uh, that it's creating as well. Um, pretty much same deal. I don't think it's worth it. Um, this is probably worse than the other one. So, you know, if the other one's like a 2.5, a a this is a 2, right? Ah, I don't like it. Fishy Flyer, Rush, add a 4-3 Rush. Okay, Rush is really good with that, with that effect. Um, this is... Kind of like a, I don't know, let's compare it to Restless Mummy. So you get one more attack, but you have to replay the other one, which is kind of extra flexibility because you don't have to commit it to board and it'll have three health. So of all of them, this is the best one, I think. And it's a Murloc. So if Murloc decks are popular, I'd say this is like a three out of five. Yeah, I've decided to use a star system. I don't know <laughs> why. Um, but you might consider uh, running it in a in a Murloc deck specifically. But other than that, I'm kind of like, eh. And the ghost, I don't know if the ghost would have the Murloc tribe also. That's another consideration. I'm going to guess not. So 5 mana, 3, 7, Ogremancer. It's Trogzor. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, summon a 2-2 skeleton with taunt. Except Trogzor had the decency to um, scale the guys he summoned. So they were he would summon um, other Trogs. So they would be three fives that scaled also with an attack whenever they played a spell. So that didn't see play at all. This 
probably won't see play either. It comes out two turns sooner, but like it summons much, much smaller guys. And you also get to run two copies of it, but I, I don't know. I think like all Trogs, this might see play in Arena, right? All right. One mana, one, two, Intrepid Initiate. Spell burst, gain, two attack. That is probably pretty good, actually. Uh, I feel like it's easy to overlook this, but in a more aggressive deck, you can get a Flame Imp with, uh, with the condition of casting a spell rather than the condition of injuring yourself. So uh, in in decks like and and you know that and there are like really aggressive early game spells now like that um the one mana summon a summon a cub give a minion plus one plus one that paired with this is really strong you have a two card two mana four three that summons a one one I don't know maybe uh, maybe I'm over valuing this but I think it has a lot of potential. Divine Rager. <laughs> you know, I always uh never really liked Ragers. I mean, like they're they're intentionally like not that good. Throwback to Ice Rager, which was <laughs> Oh man, what a meme. But um I don't know, maybe I'm undervaluing the Divine Shield here, but I just don't think this is good. <laughs> um Divine Shield does save it some heartache, but it's like Scarlet Crusader with one more mana commitment for two more attack, which is what you would expect. But it dies just as easily. So sort of a much high, much higher risk compared to the relative reward gain. So, yeah, it's not very good. Uh, Enchanted Cauldron, three mana, one six, spell burst, cast a random spell of the same cost. Okay. Um, you know, random with a little bit of manipulation is usually fun. Uh, and the fact that it's a 1-6 is interesting. So if you cast, like, a buff spell on this, that could uh, that could actually be pretty good. The issue is that... Um, I, guess it, I guess it would be a, from the pool of all spells, actually, not just your class. Because it's not, like, giving it to you, right? So uh, this, is, this is probably even still too random, even with the stipulation that it's of the same cost as, as the spell you cast. Um... I don't know. I think this is a little too random for my liking. I don't... I want to say that makes it not good. But maybe I'm missing something obvious. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say this is, probably won't see play. But it will be fun. <laughs> Five mana. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> this name always gets me. Five mana. Rogue warrior spell. Cutting class. Draw two cards. Cost one less per attack of your weapon. So, this is a uh, free draw two with Arcanite Reaper. Um, and with Warrior, with all of its upgrades and the new Legendary and all that. And I guess Rogue as well. Um, because Rogue really likes to buff attack too. And we actually see a new Rogue card that's good at that in a second. Um, you can get this really cheap. You need to get this at three mana for it to be playable. That's incredibly easy to do. If you equip... Any warrior weapon that sees play right now, you can make this an arcane intellect. If you buff that weapon at all, you make it better, right? And you will be buffing your weapons. So this could be good in, uh, like, a pirate warrior because you need that reload. Um, or any... any it, it can be used in basically any warrior or rogue deck, I'm not going to lie. It's definitely any warrior deck. Maybe rogue is a little more ambiguous because... Uh, Rogue seems to me to have tended away from, like, the weapon-heavy side, but this expansion seems to be trying to bring it back. So, I don't know. I don't know if there was enough support to make it get there just yet, but this is easy uh, auto-include in any sort of aggressive warrior that needs uh, really cheap reload. Uh, information, which I really thought would be a Rogue Warrior thing. Where it was like, uh, add two warrior taunt cards to your hand. So it would be like a pun with information. So you're like gaining information on the enemy. You're gaining their uh, opposite class card, whatever. Anyway, add two random taunt minions to your hand for two mana. This is, I know two guys. This is okay. I don't think it'll see play. Because I know a guy was one mana discover. And that was, eh. And this is too random. This might be, um... It's not like two random dragons. That was overpowered at the time. Remember that? Uh, that was Rastakhan's Rumble, I believe. But this is two random taunt minions. I mean, mm, I don't know. It's cool resource generation, but like... 
Uh, if it has the um, if it has the preference for class cards that random generation does. Um, wait, is that a thing still? I don't know. If that's still a thing, then this might be better. But because Warrior has some pretty good taunts, but otherwise, I'm gonna put a pass on this one. So athletic studies, discover a rush minion. Your next one costs one less. This is really good. I mean, um, Warrior loves rush. Like they seem to be pushing rush Warrior. This the uh, the new legendary is eligible for this, right? Um, there's some really wacky stuff you can do with this. You can, first of all, you can cheat out that legendary a turn early if it's in your hand. Second, you can discover it and then cheat it out a turn early. I mean, <laughs> you can play Restless Mummy on three. I don't know. You can do so much with this. You can, uh, play basically any super strong rush minion. Rush minions are very limited by their mana cost. And the fact that you can cheat one out a turn early is incredible. All right, on to Shaman. Tidal Wave, Life Steal, deal three damage to all minions. This is an eight cost card. Yeah, it is, it is a board clear that heals you. That's, if there's any sort of control Shaman, this will see play. Um, and I think they're trying to push it a little bit, but maybe not enough. And of course, if you have any amount of spell damage, so let's play you, let's say you play a Thalnos with this on 10, you flame strike both sides of the board and restore uh, you're just at full health right like there's there's no real way around it this is um what walking fountain did for shaman in terms of late game comeback potential i think this is trying to replicate um i think this is, this is a scary arena card oh my god especially with how value oriented it was Whew. if arena maintains the same like value oriented meta that it had earlier this expansion. I think it's slightly more tempo now, but... Oh, don't even. Don't even. <laughs> All right. I think this is good in Control Shaman, but not much else. There we go. Final answer. <laughs> Rune Dagger. More spell damage Shaman support. This is the sort of thing I was looking for. It needs cheap spell damage, and this is uh, replicatable. So you get three shots to just have big spell damage, and... You have you're committing mana on a prior turn to activate the spell damage on a later turn. That is massive because one of the big problems with shaman was that um, you know you'd be looking for that like mage has that one cost um, spell damage minion and that's the only one cost spell damage thing in existence, right? So being able to for free functionally on the turn that you're dropping your spells or dropping your uh, ras frost whisper gain spell damage is huge um i think this will see play in spell damage shaman or any sort of spell based shaman that would benefit from extra damage right if you want to uh you can mcnuke someone's face with this right like if you have a you play this the previous turn then you play um diligent note taker and lightning bolt or any sort of direct damage, lava burst even you know it doesn't matter at that point you just pyroblast at their face right um uh more than pyroblast actually because of the spell damage right it, this is this is very powerful for finishing people off with big spells or big damage spells i should say or um again in conjunction with tidal wave right this now i said on turn 10 with thalnos you can do this on turn 8 with uh rune drag rune dagger proc right this is going to be huge in any basically any shaman deck all right molten blast same deal um, this is this is gonna see play because Rune Dagger sees play, and therefore other spell damage things are likely to, you guessed it, see play. Being able to flood your board with elementals is nice. Um this is a shame there's no real elemental synergy. I mean, even if there were, there's never been like on board elemental synergy. It's always been about playing them last turn, right? So this could deal three damage and summon three one ones or four and summon right. This is this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is that imp summoning spell from uh, Warlock, Gnomes versus Goblins, way back, right? This is incredibly powerful. Oh, we're going the wrong way. No, go back. Oh, see, this is why I wish I could edit this. Vulpira Toxin Blade, three mana, three three. This is what I was talking about when I said, uh, you know, Rogue can use that draw card. Your weapon has plus two attack. Now, the only thing, actually, uh, thinking about it more, is does Rogue really need that draw between? Um, you know, it's, it's stealth synergies. It has that one card that draws if you have a stealth guy and Galakrond and, you know, it just has a bunch of 
draw cards already. I don't know if you really need that one in particular, um, but this goes a long way in making it a good option. Your weapon just has a flat plus two attack while this is on the board. It is Spiteful Smith with no condition, and it comes out in half the turns, right? This is a three drop compared to that six drop. Or is it a five drop? Whatever. <laughs> Pretty sure it's a six, but we'll get back to that. Um, I think this will see play because rogue can use some more powerful weapons trading uh i think i feel like demon hunter kind of stole rogue's identity of like i'm the guy who trades with face you know and now rogue is trying to take it back another good rogue card and it's stealth perfect for that stealth synergy card add a combo card to your hand is the spell burst so stealth and spell burst go together like peanut butter and jelly this is going to see play i think uh, being able to just and uh the combo card pool is actually Interestingly, I think not amazing, um, but I think that this could still work out pretty well. Um, I'm definitely going to try to make it work. I, I know I said right away it was C play for sure, but I, I think it's a little more ambiguous as to whether it will. Uh, sorry, whoopsie. Three mana, one four, rogue weapon, self sharpening sword, which is a great concept. After your hero attacks, gain plus one attack. So by the end, this is a 4-1, right? 2-3, three, 3-2, three, 4-1. That's pretty good, but it starts at a 1-4, which is not pretty good. So total attack there is, um, what, 10, right? 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, which is fine. But coming out on 3 might be a little slow to try to ramp it up. I think you're going to need to couple this with other attack buffs just to uh, make it get to the point where it's so powerful, right? If you put a, uh, a Deadly Poison or even your Volpera on this, then it could work. Um, I'm not so sure, though. This does seem like it, it could be viable. It could be a, like a core thing in the future, though. I'm just not so sure about right now. All right, plagiarize. Another secret. Remember when they put secrets in kobolds and catacombs and then they just let them rotate with no additional support? Well, now we have additional support for the secrets we saw in Ashes of Outland. At the end of your opponent's turn, add copies of the cards they played to your hand. Of course, like all rogue, spells, or all rogue secrets, this is two mana. Add copies of all the cards they played. That is... Probably not that good. <laughs> I was going to say, it's incredible. But, uh, I mean, like, maybe Quest Rogue wants this, right? And if you're going against... Um, and if Tempo is as dominant in the game as I think it will be, this could be good for cheap, relatively cheap resource generation. But, I don't know. It's, it's a good way to get everyone's, like, overpowered class cards. But, mm, I, I don't know. This might just be too slow, maybe too easy to play around, right? Because, um... In a single turn, you could trigger, um, you know, two of the different um, different secret triggers in a go and be like, okay, so it's either plagiarize or, you know, one of these other ones, right? Ambush or the, the spellcasting one. So I bet it's plagiarize is kind of where you go. So then you just don't play anything powerful for the rest of the turn or you give them things that are like not at all synergistic with how they work. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I gave you a uh, a guy that synergizes with spell damage and needs spell damage to be good. You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um, I feel like with all secrets, it's easy enough to play around or with most secrets, I should say. Um, stupid mage. <laughs> so we'll see. Priest spell now six mana initiation. Deal four damage to a minion. If that kills it, summon a new copy. Huh. I mean, it's um, it's holy water, but for one more mana, and it summons it immediately. Yeah. Um, holy water was, like, borderline, I think. I think it did see play in Highlander decks. So this will probably see play just period, right? Um, coming out on six with four damage. So coming out a turn later with the same amount of damage is questionable, but... Think about it like this. The whole idea of how um, how like these cards are getting... The bodies are getting smaller as we get more interesting effects strapped to them. So on 6, 4 damage is a bigger deal than it was when Holy Water came out. So I think this will be fine. 
um, it might it it has a good chance to see play. I think. Oh man, five mana pre, uh, paladin spell, blessing of authority. Give a minion plus eight plus eight. It can't attack heroes this turn. Okay, that's fine. I guess put this on a a fat taunt or something with divine shield, and you're golden. Imagine this on goody two shields. So you play your goody two shields on three, maybe even four. Um, and then you, you know, somebody pops its divine shield. You're like, oh, oh no. Uh, but they manage not to kill it, which is why would you pop the divine if whatever. Um, then you play this on it. It gains its shield back and it is now a 12, 10. So obviously this falls victim to hard removal, which basically every class has access to nowadays. Rest in peace, Druid. Um, but it's it's also five mana and it can't attack heroes this turn, right? That this turn is very key, of course. But I don't know. I think um I think Paladin likes big buffs. I think that's the secret. Imagine um playing this on the uh on a in a minion that and when you have a minion on board, like the Genie of Zephyrus effect, right? Where you can cast this spell on another minion at the same time, right? Or you so, or a Vorax, right? You like, <laughs> which is just silly, of course. Vorax is not viable. <laughs> it's That's a silly concept. But imagine it, right? Um, so I think this is probably... Given that Paladin likes taunts and divine shields, this probably actually stretches the value a little more. I'm not sure if it's good though i i'm gonna say it's uh it's highly dependent on what archetypes are relevant and okay we're nearing the end here gibberling druids oh man this is silly druid minion one man one one spell burst summon a gibberling so you know people are posting all the meme combos of like oh if i have all these zero cost spells in my hand and if i have like this and the um lightning bloom and power of the wild and like coin right and, and you know one other one mana spell that summons another guy right so you, you just have a full board of two twos on turn two i mean like that's unrealistic obviously but the underlying the undercurrent of yes this can lead to powerful combos is there um i think this is going to be good i think um this is a, it's not a beast, of course, but it is a good zoo druid card. So I think it'll see play as long as that archetype sees play. And I think based on the other cards we've seen, it has a good shot. And last, partner assignment. Amazing example of how to do support for a big beast druid that isn't just having more big beasts. So uh, for one mana, you add a random two cost and three cost beast to your hand. So they still benefit from all your on-board and in-hand beast synergy, but you don't have to worry about them cluttering your deck when you want to summon them with a um, with an Animal Guardians, for example. So you can keep all of your beasts at like four or five, ideally five, and still have an early game, which is huge for a minion-based deck like that. You can't just go skipping turns one through four because you want to optimize the value of one card in your deck. So um, this, you know, cheap resource generation, cheap uh, minion summoning spells, those are all great for this sort of deck. I think that, um, again, big druid, big beast druid, that is, seems like a good enough idea to me that this will see play um, at least Maybe it'll be like a tier two deck, but I think it will see play. And if I'm not mistaken, that was the last one. Yeah, it was. Hi, Jandis. Sorry about skipping you. Totally missed your release. Don't know when you came out, but whatever. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this was a 25 minute video. So thank you for sticking all the way through it. Um, if you love me that much, you should go ahead and check out the rest of my videos playlist in the card above. Um, and that's everything. Follow me on all of my socials. You can see those in the description. And have a wonderful day.